Never Lose a Deal podcast. And today I am coming to you to discuss investing in cash flow, non-performing mortgage notes. Now, depending on who you are listening to, I know primarily here online, online, many people when it comes to real estate really only have, you know, one um, uh, exposure to real estate. And so you have people who are now in a place of doom and gloom and they're talking about there's no deals and, you know, uh, real estate is a really tough industry to really benefit and profit from. And I'm here to be the bearer of good news for you. Um, in my last video, I talked about the importance of understanding your asset class. And I've said this last year. I said, as things change in the market, you are going to see your most successful business funding real estate experts put their head down. And because the reason why is because a few years ago, you know, money was plentiful, access was plentiful, and many people don't know how to stay afloat when things get topsy-turvy. And so with me, you know, I've always, you know, I always tell my clients, really at this time, I'm really only working with real estate investors who primarily, they know their asset class. Um, a lot of people, they have said to me, oh, Lorelia, you only show testimonials from people from a few years ago. And the reason why is because a lot of those people I still work with. Um, I still work <laughs> with a lot of those clients that you see on many of my testimonial videos. But without boring you with all those things, I'm going to get right into it. So what is investing in, in cash flow? For those who don't know, um, many people have asked me, oh, Lorelia, you know, you help, you know, real estate investors, you know, um, uh, get business funding for real estate. What do you invest in? What do you invest in? And if you have ever been a client of mine, I always tell my clients, I invest in real estate mortgage notes. And for the person who is not familiar with the real estate mortgage note space, um, it is allowing you to invest in cash flow. You are pretty much putting yourself in the seat of a banker. So for real estate investors like myself who invest in real estate mortgage notes, we're not investing in the hard asset. We're investing in the actual stream of income that is secured by a real estate asset. You So you are acting as the bank. So what happens is, is that there is a person who owns the home. Now, depending on what state, I'm not going to go into contract for deeds, um, um, mortgage deed states, what have you, but there are individuals who own the home. In many states, for example, I'm going to use New Jersey, for example, when you buy a home, you, be, you get a deed. So at closing, they give you a deed, but if you get a mortgage on that home, there's a lien against it because although you may own the home and a title company or your attorney may give you the deed, which a lot of times they do, of course they do, it's, you know, it's recorded at the county courthouse, but there's a lien that's against the secured asset because real estate is a secured asset. So what happens is, is that there's a lien holder who is the mortgage holder and every month you pay your mortgage to the bank. Well, that is what I do. There is individuals who they own a home, an asset that's secured by real estate, but they must pay their mortgage. And so there are banks, there are hedge funds, asset managers who have 
mortgages on their on their books that they are looking to sell. And a lot of times for the the bank or for the hedge fund, these assets may not be profitable for them, which is why they're non-performing notes. An individual like myself who raises their hand and say, hey, I'm interested to, you know, in purchase any non-performing notes that you have on your books. And if the numbers work out correctly, I will submit a bid and I will bid on the asset, I mean, on the mortgage instrument to be able to now purchase it from the hedge fund or the asset manager or the bank. And now I become the person or the company, of course, not the person, because of course I'm doing everything in my business name, but now my company is now the new company that the homeowner is now going to pay their mortgage to. I know I've said a lot, but I want to give you a background of what it looks like. Now, keep in mind, when you decide to invest in mortgage notes, you are acting as the bank. So everything is based on numbers and the returns that you want and you know and the type of cash flow that you're looking to receive because you're not looking at the asset i'm not interested in buying the home now there's a hundred ways to skin a cat when it comes to the mortgage note space everyone has a a an idea or a different investment strategy that works for them which is why you have people who invest in non-performing first position mortgage notes you have people who invest in performing first position mortgage notes you have people who invest in seconds you have people who invest in reverse mortgages at the end of the day like i tell everyone it's a hundred ways to skin a cat i know what works for me i know what the yields that i'm looking for because at the end of the day i'm buying cash flow I'm investing in cash flow. I'm not looking to buy a house. And for the 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 novice or the new real estate investor and even some seasoned investors, that correlation is hard for them to understand because if you're a savvy real estate investor, you've bought properties, you're doing deals, it is hard for some to now put the hat on as a real estate investor. I mean, as a real estate banker, because you're acting as the bank. So today, you know, as I do this podcast, you may be watching on YouTube, you may be listening on the streaming uh, sites, Apple, Spotify, what have you. I'm going to be sharing my screen. So for those who are listening, you can hop on over to YouTube to see the visuals of what I am sharing. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to give you an idea of what it looks like when you are bidding and doing um, an analysis of what it is that you're looking to purchase from the bank. So as you see, this was a a non-performing mortgage pool tape. Um, that I received um, from uh, a hedge fund. And so I extracted what I was looking for. So the particular states that I was looking to invest in was Georgia, North Carolina, and uh, South Carolina. So I extracted what I wanted. And then from there, um, I started to do a sort. So as you can see, um, I'm not looking at properties. I'm looking at numbers. And that's why I said for some real estate investors, um, this not my, this may not be their jam. So that's why you have novice people who their only exposure to real estate is what they see online, the fix and flips, the multifamilies. And so they're used to seeing hard assets. They, they want to see hard assets. So things like this, 
they are they're not interested in. But for me, I'm a numbers person. I like to analyze. <laughs> so this is my jam. So I enjoy looking at numbers, doing calculations to decide on what type of returns and cash flow that I'm looking for. So the first thing I do is when I do my sort of the tape is I do a sort of um, the payment, um, the payments of the assets. And as you can see in column E, um, the, the, the payment stream start at $126. Now I normally invest in things that are $250 or higher. So that's why you see the dark gray, because this is telling me that I'm not looking at none of these assets that are below $250 because that is the payment that the homeowner is making to the bank. Hence, will be me if my bid is accepted successfully. And so um, if you see, make this a little bigger for those who are online, may can't see. Um, as you can see, it starts off at row six. So row six, I do some calculations. I'm looking at, um, number one, I'm looking at this, this particular homeowner because this is a non-performing uh, mortgage note. So I'm looking to see if any payments have been made. So I'm noticing that um, the homeowner has made some payments. They make them a bit sporadic, but they're making payments. Um, so they made a payment in June and in May, and it looks like they, they make big lump sum payments. And so the unpaid balance on this particular asset um, is $17,781. And, and I do some calculations um, according to um, the asset manager. Uh, last payment date was as of this year, March 16th, 2023. But I can see if this payment stream is correct, you know, they've made some payments. And so they'll let me know with the day since the last payment. And this is an interest rate for that particular mortgage um, note uh, for at 10%. So like I said, you know, I, I run my own numbers. I know how much yield I want. And I'm looking for a 20% yield or 22% yield. And that is how I determine my bid price. And so my bid price is going to be 13000 288. That's what I would bid on the mortgage note, because of course, I'm not looking to buy the note um, for dollar for dollar. I'm looking to get it as a discount. Um, because the great thing about mortgage notes is that you're investing in cash flow, which allows you to have instant equity. You know, unlike buying a home, you know, there are some people who may buy them right, who may buy them wrong. Um, but those who, um, most people understand with a real estate asset, you have to wait for the equity to build up. With mortgage notes, you decide on the yields that you want. So that's why understanding the numbers and doing your calculations is very important. So you'll know if this is an asset that you want to bid on. And so the columns that are in ye yellow are some calculations, you know, that I did to be able to come up um, with my numbers. This particular video, I'm not going to go into calculations, but I'm just going to show you um, some of the things that, that I look at. So, you know, this is to give you an idea of the tape. So I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to now share with you the case studies, because a lot of people are like, oh, you're just showing me a whole bunch of um, Excel files. So now I'm going to show you two of the assets that are on this particular tape that I was looking at, um, because I guess I should have pointed out, and l let me go back and share with you that on the tape, as I'm doing my calculations, 
Um, the ones in yellow are the calculations that based on the information that was given to me, I'm able to come up with some numbers. Now, as you notice, there are some things that are missing. I mean, this particular asset manager was able to give me the dates that things had got modified. Some of these um, assets got modified on here, as you can see in 2008, this one in 2019, this one in 2021. So it kind of threw off my numbers. But the things that I didn't have is I didn't have the original maturity date. I like to have that to be able to reverse engineer some of the calculations that I'm calculating. Um, also on here, um, remaining term years, some of them are empty, which is why it's pink. So for me, I, I do that little color coding to let me know that some of the calculations didn't work out correctly because I'm missing things. I don't have re remaining term years or what have you. And um, like I said, I didn't get the original term for any of the assets and the original maturity date. I didn't get anything here as well. So I just wanted to kind of point uh, that out. So now I'm going to do a case study of the actual asset. So this is Albany, Georgia, a non-performing note. Um, as you can see, nice little home, you know, it's definitely well taken care of. Like I said, um, it's a non-performing no mortgage note. But what I noticed with the tape is that this particular homeowner is making some payments. So it's not like they have stopped making payments. It's been over the years. I mean, over a year, they are making some sporadic um, payments. So I feel comfortable with that. Um, along with that, I look at some of the details and these are the details that are important for me to be able to make a decision on if I'm moving forward with buying the asset or um, uh, if I want to JV um, with um, a funding partner to be able to fund this particular mortgage note. Um, so here are the details. So the BPO on this asset um, based on the bank is 70K. Um, unpaid balance of 17,781. Um, there's a payment that um, the homeowner makes of 255 uh, and 83 cents. Remember I mentioned that they make those payments sporadic and I'm gonna give it a bid price of 13,000. Um, that would give me a yield of 22%. And my cash on cash return on investment would be 23%, double digits. Now, please tell me that there are not too many real estate assets that you can invest in that are going to give you those yields. Because see, if I when I buy it at a discount, I get an automatic yield on my money of 22%. And like I said, <laughs> um, I'm acting as the bank. I'm concerned with my yield and the cash flow I'm receiving. I'm not concerned about the asset. I'm concerned because I want to make sure my investment is secured by a real estate asset, but I'm not buying the property. I mean, clearly I'm seeing that, you know, homeowner, it, it you know, seemed like it's well taken care of. Um, manicured lawns. So clearly there is some uh, pride in home ownership with this particular asset. So I feel comfortable with that. Of course, as I go through due diligence, when I put in my bid, I'll have, you know, and a real estate agent to do a drive-by just to make sure that this is a current um uh that this is the current condition of this home but for what i see you know the things look good i mean like i said i like these these numbers i like these yields um it's definitely something i will move forward with the second asset this is in georgia also lincolnton georgia is a non-performing note as you can see you know looks like property is well taken care of based on um you know google um what's it called? Google uh, Earth or whatever. So I took a picture of the asset um, and these are the details. So the BPO on this particular asset is 220,000. Um, the UPB is 59,691. Payment is $309. Bid price 
I would bid at $29,621. It has a yield of 12%. The cash on cash return on investment for me is 13%. Once again, double digit returns. My yield is 12%. I'm happy. I'm happy. And this particular asset, I would have to do more of a deeper dive because I did notice that the mortgage term was over 300, you know, 300 um, remaining payments. So has me to, um, you know, once again, they didn't give me on the tape uh, the original, um, let me go back to it. I didn't get... On that particular asset, I didn't get the original term because as you can see, the remaining term years are 423. I mean, that's pretty much, <laughs> that's 40 more years. So I'm curious to know what type of um, uh, original term was made. And then as you can see, the original maturity date um, is missing as well. So, um, so those are some things that, you know, would raise a red flag. Um, but once again, double digit, you know, um, double digit, uh, returns and yields, because once again, I'm buying a payment stream. I'm not buying an asset. And so these are, the things that mortgage note holders um, like myself, those who invest in non-performing mortgage notes, we're looking at the payment stream. We're looking at the amount of yield that we want to earn, and we're looking on the cash on cash return. So this is just an example of what investing in cash flow looks like. Because like I said, you have people now who are saying, there's no deals, there's no deals, it's hard to invest in real estate. Exactly, because those individuals are able to do things when times are booming. It is now when things get a little rocky that it's gonna separate those who were serious and those who are curious. And so normally, how does this play in the scheme of business funding, which is what I always talk about here on the Never Lose a Deal podcast here on YouTube? Well, once again, business funding, being able to leverage some type of form of funding. I talk about the real estate capital stack. Clearly, both of those assets I showed you one bidding at 13,000 the other one the bid was at 20 something thousand now i look at my business funding capital stack and i now i compare what type of funding do i want to use to be able to move forward and purchase those assets that is how you avoid getting caught behind the eight ball because if you're going to leverage some type of funding, you want to make sure you have a cash flowing asset to be able to offset some of the funding that you are looking to leverage. But that goes in hand in hand with understanding your asset class. Most people don't understand their real estate asset class, so they're thinking that funding is going to fix those things. No, they're not you needing to understand the, the, the working metrics, meaning know your numbers, know what type of returns you want. And this is not even what real estate knows. That's with anything that you do in real estate is that most people are not running their numbers. <laughs> they do not know what their numbers are because they're buying into the success that they see other people do online. They will not run their numbers. They will not learn. And I say this as we are in 2023, going into 2024, 
Now is not the time to try to wing it. Don't try to wing it. <laughs> now is the time to really hunker down and become a student of whatever that you do in real estate. If fix and flips your jam, then know the numbers. If if buying multis is your jam, know the numbers. If if you do mo invest in mobile homes or tax liens, know the numbers. But do not be that person who thinks I need to get some funding, and then when I get the funding, I will invest in real estate. I've said this time and time again. That's how you get caught behind the eight ball. Your experts will not tell you that. Why? Because nine times out of 10, they are not there to see you have success. So they're going to throw the gyms. They're going to say, I'm going to show you the game. And it leaves a lot of people not understanding that they're spinning two plates. You're spinning the plate of trying to figure out how real estate works, whatever it is you're investing in. And then you're trying to manage investing um, and then leveraging funding. It is a combination for a disaster. How do I know? Because I have people who've reached out to me and they are engulfed with trying to understand how a particular person is doing things. And then they want clarity on how to get it done. And like I always say, I'm not here to give you clarity on somebody's the gems and the games that they've give you. I'm only here to share what it is that I do. These are some of the things that I do. Investing in cash flow, leveraging some type of funding, whether it's JV with um, a funding partner, whether it's me using my funds. But at the end of the day, I know what I'm looking for in an investment. I'm not looking to be a fixer flipper. So you won't see me standing in front of no properties holding no hammer. I'm not interested in buying, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, uh, multifamilies. I like cash flow. I like being the lien holder. I like being the bank. I like acting as the bank because at any time a homeowner stops making their mortgage payment, I can move to the next step. Foreclosure is usually the last, uh, the last thing that I want to pursue. A lot of times it's just a matter of working with the homeowner. There's a servicer who does all that. I don't need to act as a servicer. You may be wondering, oh, do you call the homeowners? No, I don't. There's a servicer that the homeowner will speak to and, and, and I will you know, share with the servicer some of the things that I'm willing to work out with the homeowner to make it a win-win for both of us. So at the end of the day, that's what I have for you today. I want to give you an example of what investing in cash flow looks like with the non-performing mortgage notes, what I'm doing, because so many people <laughs> are always interested in what someone else is doing. <laughs> I, I've yet to understand how that helps people, but I'm, I'm full of transparency. What a tra you know, um, what to share with you, um, any receipts that I can. But as always, if you find value in what I've shared today, links will be below this video. If you're listening on the streaming apps, please leave me a review. Please rate the podcast. If you're watching me on YouTube, leave me your thoughts, share. The, uh, the, the YouTube video, give me thumbs up or what have you, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you, and see you the next episode again. Bye-bye. <laughs>